Hi, today I'm gonna to make a memory bear. Today I'm gonna to take this graphic shirt and turn it into a memory bear. If you don't know what a memory bear is, it's a stuffed bear that's typically made from someone's clothing. It could be a shirt, a pair of pants, a jacket, a dress, pajamas, almost any fabric can be turned into a memory bear. And it's a way of taking something that maybe you have stuffed away in a closet or in a box and having it out on display, something that you can hold and hug and, and cuddle. So for today's project, you'll need a bear pattern, uh, a shirt or whatever fabric you're gonna use, stuffing, scissors, sewing machine, and a marker. Okay, let's get started. This shirt was sent to me and somebody asked me to create a memory bear using this graphic tee. So I'm gonna show you the steps that I take to turn a graphic tee into a memory bear. The first step would be to cut the shirt so it's in flat, usable pieces. Before cutting the shirt, I always want to look and make sure if there's any pieces that I want to make sure stay intact for the bear. Since this one has a big image on the front, I'll, um, I'll talk about how I'm going to make that work. There's no other parts of this shirt except the sleeves and the image. The rest is, is just a, a, the white material. So I'll start cutting the sleeve off and I just cut along the seam. Once I have the sleeve off, I will find the, the seam of the sleeve and cut that. And once you open the sleeve up, you'll see you have a lot of fabric that you can use. Now that the sleeves are off, some shirts will have a seam running up the sides and if they do I'll just cut right up the seam. Since this is more of a, of a t-shirt style, there, it, there isn't usually seams on the side. So I'm just going to lay the shirt, making sure that I'm not getting any of the graphic and then I'll just snip right up the sides. There, now I have the front and the back. So I know on the, on the belly of the bear, I'm going to try and have Marvin. Typically, when I make memory bear, I use these clear pattern pieces and I'll lay them on there to decide where I'm gonna cut to make sure I include the parts of the image I wanna showcase. I don't really wanna cut down the middle of Marvin. I think if I did have to cut it in half and I sewed a very small seam, it, it would still look okay, but I'd like to try something else. So I have made uh, a belly, a, a template belly. And I'm going to use that to show me where on this shirt I can cut out a full piece for the belly instead of my typical two piece. I'd like to be able to include some of his face and the body. Since the size of, of my memory bears would not allow for the entire image, I want to try and make sure I can get as much as I can. I don't know if you can see it on camera, 
but this material that I'm using is, is a little sheer, so when I lay it flat, I can see the image through the material. Now I'd also like to try and use some of the font. Again, the, the, the size of the words, I'm probably not going to be able to get all of it, but I'd like to be able to get some of it. So, looks like I could maybe use part of the words on the foot, one on each side. Now that I've decided, I'm going to trace around my pattern. Depending on what material you're using, you're going to want to use a, a marker, a sharpie, a pencil, a chalk. I'm just going to use a regular pen today. I'm giving myself just a little bit of extra room on my pieces. There's my belly. Typically when I'm making my memory bears, I like to put my interfacing on first and trace around on the, inter on the interfacing on the reverse side of the fabric. But since I wanted to be sure that I got Marvin um, in the middle of the, of the belly, I went ahead and traced it. I'm gonna go ahead and add my interfacing now to all the parts of the shirts and continue tracing out the pattern pieces. This is the interfacing that I use. It's a, a lighter weight interfacing. I want to say it's P44F. Um, yes, it's P44F. And it's a fusible interfacing, so I can just iron it on the reverse, and it makes it really easy to, to trace your pattern pieces off. It also gives t-shirt and clothing fabric a little bit more stability when cutting it out, so it doesn't stretch and distort the shape of the bear. Depending on which interfacing you use, you want to make sure to follow the instructions for that interfacing. I'm just going to set my iron down, holding it for a couple seconds, just to let that glue adhere. When putting your interfacing down, make sure that the bumpy, the gluey side is facing the fabric. So I think, um, I think it would look nice to have one part of the arm blue and then the in the inside of the arm to be white or reverse blue on the inside and white on the outside, half and half. I'd also like part of the ear to be blue. I might do one blue and one white, or I might do the front blue and the front white. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut at least two of the ear pieces out of the blue. So for the back, for the body back, I'm going to try and do half blue and half white and continue with the theme. One of the great things about memory bears is each shirt is unique, each person is unique, and the way that you can create the bear to showcase a certain part of the shirt is unique. So every keepsake 
is, is different and personalized. If you have one large shirt, that's typically enough to make one bear. But if all you have is a couple small shirts, you can use those and piece them together in a way that you like to make a bear. I also need to cut out two foot pads, but with my memory bears, I like to offer the option of having an embroidery on the foot pad. So I'm gonna take my foot fabric over to the embroidery machine, embroider, and then I'll cut the, the foot pad out. So that'll be my next step, is I'm gonna go over to the embroidery machine, embroider the name, I'll trace and cut that out, and then I'm gonna take all the pieces over to my sewing machine and start assembling this memory bear. Here he is, the completed bear. I'm really happy with how the belly turned out. Marvin looks great on there. I like the two-tone arms and legs and the two-tone on the, on the head. Even the back of the bear mimics the same two-tone pattern. So I'll get them all stuffed up and then I'll stitch up the arms, the legs, and the belly. For stuffing, I'm just using regular polyfill stuffing. I like to break it up a little bit before I put it inside so that it's not um, so solid. There we go. And then I'll start stuffing the tummy. No matter how many memory bears I make, it's always amazing how how unique they are and how, I guess, just how, how wonderful they are when you just take a, a simple t-shirt and it can turn into this super cute little bear. With this bear, I really like the contrast, not only in the color of the white and the blue, but the texture is, is a bit of a waffled texture. And then the t-shirt texture, it just adds something special to this bear. And there he is, he's coming together. I'm gonna go ahead and get him all stitched up.
and I try and pick a color thread that will blend in. Typically the seam is pretty much invisible when you create a ladder stitch. But just in case, I try and use a neutral fabric or a neutral thread. And you can kind of see the reason that it's called a ladder stitch. It looks similar to a ladder. You want to try and make your stitches as evenly spaced as you can. And when you pull it tight, the seam disappears. And there he is. He really did turn out really cute. I love that I was able to keep Marvin the Martian in one solid piece with no seam. And I can't wait to get this guy ready to go back home. Here he is, the completed memory bear. You can see I added an embroidery patch and I added a name to the foot. I was able to use the whole front of the t-shirt on the belly and I really, really like the two-tone effect and the different textures that this t-shirt had. So thanks for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please hit the like button and to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. See you later.